Who was our speaker of the day? Who was best speaker? Nobody voted. But did somebody win? Well, nobody voted. The, no, here's, the, here's the reason. The B and uh, you're not counting. The <laughs> 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 Toastmaster and I discussed whether it was fair to vote on best speaker given that one of our two speakers was presenting a can't speech. So we decided against it. And typically, uh, you don't vote a can't speech at the vote. My personal feeling is that the presentation is the thing. The content is almost secondary. So we should vote on best speaker, even if one of the speakers is giving a can't speech. Explain it all? Anything else? <laughs> well. I want to thank our guest who's standing in the sitting in the corner even though there's a spare chair. Oh I, I was told to sit in these, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to I didn't want to do anything. Linda, oh, yeah. I thought it was the only empty chair. Where is the oh, other empty Lord. chair? Oh sorry, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. I, I can't read your, your No, I just I didn't want to break any rules. No, no, no. <laughs> That's really that's really important. <laughs> that's right. Two things to be said about that very quickly. The reason we run our meetings as formally as we do is so that we all learn best practices on how to conduct a meeting, how to act, how to conduct yourself as a person within a meeting. So that's why all this shaking of hands, walking, it all seems procedural, but it's just so that it all becomes second nature, so that our bad habits or faux pas don't detract from when we are doing this real thing in, out in the real world. So that's that. Second, if I can, just get your opinion on what you thought of the meeting. Um, stand up. Please stand up.